talking to you about the recent progress on our carbon fiber composite airframes. We started to plan out the design for our rocket airframes in January, right before the first test airframe was made. Our first attempt at making a carbon fiber airframe had many problems. One of the issues we encountered was that when drying, the epoxy resin dripped down the side of the tube, therefore making it not aerodynamic. Our second test airframe, also known as SN2, attempted to use peel ply on the outside of the carbon fiber so that it would absorb the resin while drying. Also on SN2, we started using mylar on the inside of the tube to make it smooth. The tube for SN2 was intentionally smaller than production since we needed to test out our new way of making carbon composite airframes. This turned out to be a great method of making carbon composite tubes, but it would take some fine tuning to make it perfect. The next airframe we made was called Serial Number 3 and was intended to scale up the design of Serial Number 2. It was now the size needed for a small thrust vector controlled rocket. When I built Serial Number 3, I didn't use enough resin and sections of the airframe were weak since there was no resin. After some consideration, we decided to scrap serial number 3 and move straight to serial number 4. On serial number 4, we used much more resin on the inside of the tube and the outside. I also made it 4 layers thick instead of 3. After about 30 hours of drying in the sun, serial number 4 was complete. It was much stronger than serial number 3 and serial number 2, so it could be used on the first Delta thrust vector controlled rocket. Even though there are still a couple problems that we need to fix, we are one step forward to completing the next generation of high-powered rocket technology. I'm Cole, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the launch site.